Welcome to this WiseOwl tutorial on creating charts within PowerView. Here's what you'll learn during the tutorial. We'll begin by looking at how you can create charts in PowerView, then go on to formatting them, that won't take long. We'll look at how you can create multiple charts, so you have different charts showing different aspects of the same data in rows and columns. We'll look at how you can drill down, so for example by double clicking on a particular segment in a pie chart, how you can show the underlying data. And finally, we'll look at how you can create scatter and bubble charts, including playing videos showing the variation of bubbles over time, which is as much fun as it sounds, actually. So let's get started. To follow this tutorial, you'll need to have a Power Pivot data model set up. So if you look at some of the previous tutorials in the series on PowerView, you'll see how to create this. What we're now going to do is, using this, create a Power View report by going to the Insert tab, choosing Power View, and creating a report. Now, to create a chart, what you do is create a table visualization and then turn it into a chart. What I'm going to do is show total sales by species. Followers of this tutorial won't be surprised at that. And then, having selected the species name and the quantity in the Power View fields on the right hand side, I can turn this into a chart using one of these obvious tabs or icons on the Design tab. So I could choose a stacked bar chart and make it a bit bigger. I could choose a column chart or I could choose something like a pie chart, all of which are sensible choices. I'm going to turn that back into a bar chart now. If you want to have more than one data series in, you could choose to group by, for example, the region name as well. And when you do that, PowerView will make a sensible choice how to present the data. So that's a normal bar chart. I can choose a 100% stack bar chart, a cluster bar chart. It's all pretty obvious. And the column chart uh, options will look exactly the same, but vertical rather than horizontal. Things get a bit weird when I choose uh, chart types like Pi, which are only designed to represent a single data series. What it does is stuffs all of the data points onto the single pie chart. Now I'll look at how to get around that later in this tutorial when we look at vertical and horizontal multiples. For the moment though, let's just undo what I've just done on the by clicking the undo tool. And what we'll do now is look at how to format charts. Showing how to format a chart in PowerView isn't going to take long because there's not a great deal you can do. I've got the chart left over from the previous part of this tutorial. At the moment, I'm showing quantity by species name and region name, but any chart will do for the purposes of this. There's three things you can do for a chart, and they all involve you clicking firstly within the chart so that you can get to the Layout tab of the ribbon. And what I'm going to do is look at the three things in this order, Title, Legend, and Data Labels. For the title, PowerView will automatically create one for you, and you can't change the text to this. So what I usually do is say I don't want a title, choose None, and then add my own in using the PowerView tab and creating a text box. So I'm going to call this Exciting Chart, and what you could then do is format that and move it, which failed the first time, and it can be quite time consuming getting it to look good. Even if you were to horizontally align it like I've done there, when you change your chart, the text box won't automatically follow it. So it can be a bit of a pain getting everything to look good. The second thing you can do for a chart is to change a legend. I'm going to put mine at the bottom, which is why I tend to prefer legends. And you'll see I now have to scroll across to see all my regions. The third thing you can do for a chart is to set data labels. And these are uh, labels showing how big points are. I'm going to choose outside end, in which case theoretically at any rate they won't be within the chart itself. It doesn't quite work like that always. You can see I've only got a selection of data labels. It only seems to work when I have a single data series. So what I'm going to do is go to the Power View Fields uh, ribbon or tab on the right hand side, get rid of my re legend by choosing Remove Field there, and then my data labels look a bit more sensible. But I'm actually going to undo what I've just done so that I can go on to the next part of this uh, tutorial, which is to show multiples. I've got my chart inherited from the previous part of this tutorial, which claims to be an exciting chart. Let's make it live up to its ex promise. To do that, we're going to make it into a pie chart first. And as I've mentioned, PowerView does something a bit silly and puts all of the data points onto a single chart. What I was going to do is change the colour and slices round by dragging the region up into the colour and dragging the species down into the slices. It still looks just as silly, but it prepares me better for where I know we're going. 
What we're going to do is create one pie chart for each species. And to do that, you can drag the species down into the horizontal multiple section of this chart. And you can see that what PowerView will do is to create one chart per species. If you're wondering why they all look so similar, it's because the underlying data is actually fairly similar for each species, but they are slightly different. Now I've only managed to fit three of my four species across the top here, and that's because my number of columns is actually set to three by default. I can change that by going to the Layout tab, choosing my grid width and saying, well, actually, I'll have four charts per, per row, please. And I've managed to fit all of my species onto a single chart. What I'm now going to do is show the years down the left-hand side. So let's go to the All tab of the Power View fields, choose my calendar table. And what I'm going to do is drag my year down and make that a vertical multiple. Initially, nothing changes. You can actually see I've got 2013 there, but I need to scroll down to see 2014. That's not very satisfactory. The problem is my grid height is only one row high. So I'm going to do a similar thing with the grid height on the Layout tab and change that to two rows. And you can now see all my data on a single chart. And very nice it looks too. So these are the figures for 2013 for amphibians, for example. Whether you've got a single chart or, as here, multiple charts in PowerView, you can drill down by double-clicking on any segment. So let's try that. I'm going to go for Reptiles in 2013. I can click on the segment to make it stand out, and then double-click on it, and nothing happens. It looks like I'm lying. The reason there's nowhere to drill down to is because I haven't specified a next level of detail down. So what I'm going to do is take the Town Name field and drag it into the color. And within town, what I could add is another level of detail, which is a center name. So I'll drag that underneath the town. I've now got somewhere to go to. Let's try what I did again. Choose a reptile segment, double click on it, and it takes me down to the town name. You can see I've got too many towns, so it's not managing to store my data or represent all my data. I could choose any individual town and double click on that. And what that will do is show all the details for the centers within that town. And when I finish drilling down, I can click on this little icon to go back up again a couple of levels. You can see my legend shows me a bit about it, but it's quite hard to see what's actually going on, I think, here. So I'm going to go back up two levels, so I'm back in my original chart. So the last thing we're going to do on charts is to create scatter and bubble charts. The first thing I'm going to do is to get rid of my existing PowerView report. I've learned through bitter experience that the less PowerView reports you can have open, the better, as PowerView has a tendency to crash without a memory of messages I found. Maybe it's just my machine. So what I'm going to do now is to add in another PowerView report. And on this, I will create a visualization showing the region name. So let's add the region name in. And next to that, I'm going to show two statistics about shopping centers. One is how many units each shopping center has, and the other is how many square what the square meter area is. Now, I don't want to actually want to sum those information together for each region, so what I'm going to do is change the st statistic to show the average in each case. As a table, that's a non-starter, but what I'm now going to do is change it into a scatter chart. And what PowerView will do is get each point to represent the combination of the number of average number of units and the average square meter area for that region. So you can see, for example, if I let my mouse linger over that, I'm looking at the West Midlands region. It would be nice if I could see these color coded. So what I'm going to do is take the region and not only have it as the um, details, but also as a color. So when I release the mouse button, I get a legend showing me which region is which. But I can do better than that because I can also show the relative sizes of the different scatter points. So for example, if there were more sales in London, as I suspect is going to prove to be the case, then this bubble will be bigger than some of the others. And to do that, I add a size field. I'm going to use a total quantity, shock horror. So if we take the quantity and drag that down into the size, and then the bubbles will change sizes. My suspicions were wrong, actually. The biggest region by far is this one, which is the southeast. East Anglia is tiny compared to that. So that's a bubble chart. One more thing, and it's a tad gimmicky, I think. We're going to play a video showing how the bubbles vary over time. To do that, I'm going to go to the calendar table and choose my field, which I'm going to vary, which is going to be my month name sorted. And I'm going to drag that down and make that my play axis. 
Before I play this, I need to make sure I'm looking at a single year, otherwise it won't make much sense. So what I'm going to do is set a filter just for this chart, probably, and drag the year in to say, I'm only looking at figures for one year. I can click on this little symbol to change my filter mode, and I'm just going to look at 2013. And I think I'm good to go now. So here's the thing. When you click on this play button, what it will do is play over the 12 months of 2013, how the bubbles are changing. Can you see they were shimmering? I think that's worth doing one more time. And the bubbles are shimmering to show the change over time. With more normal data, there would be much wider, wider ranges of variation. And that's it on PowerView Charts. If you like what you've seen and heard so far, why not head over to the WiseHour website, where you can find loads more free resources, including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.